So let's talk about when you should create indexes. And, and this is generally um, a problem that we all struggle with as DBAs because it's very rare, especially in the modern IT landscape, that you sit down and think about the way queries are going to run at the design stage and when you know, the product is in development and you come up with a carefully crafted set of indexes. What tends to happen is, is you have a problem and you solve it by creating an index and the question is, well, should I have created it? Should I have created a different one? What are the side effects of that, et cetera? So let's talk about creating indexes. Here's a classic example. I'm doing an insert, I'm doing a big select statement from a huge table with a load date greater than sys date minus one. This is a fictional example, but it's the classic thing that comes across our, across our desk as DBAs in terms of, here's a query, it's running slow, make it faster. This is the issue. You know, people get the, the, the familiar swirly timestamp. Um, I had to Google it, it's called an infinite progress indicator. You've lost that ability to think about this in the design stage. It's just like, this is a problem, fix it now. Let's put aside all the technology. Let's just think about as a DBA, what is actually best practice? You have a slow SQL, you think it can be improved with an index. Let's not talk about just slamming an index in, which I'll admit is probably our first port of call. Let's talk about what best practice should be. The first thing you need to do is identify all those queries that are struggling. It might just be one, there might be 10. So the best way to do that is generally to monitor the SQL load over time or in the critical times that it's happening. So that could be an AWR report that you're looking at or the top SQL report, any tool or simple set of queries at your disposable and say VDL SQL stats and the like that lets you monitor and pick up a set of SQL statements that potentially need attention. Number two is then you want to then go look at each of those individual SQLs and in particular look at the leading columns on the predicates on those particular SQLs. It's no use just indexing whatever columns you want, obviously. You have to look at each SQL, consider the predicates, and then look at the leading columns for each of those predicates, and then come up with a set of potential indexes to fix each of those SQLs. Then you need to consolidate it, because you may come up with three SQLs, as I put in the example there. One's doing where A equals something, one's doing where A and B equals something, and one's doing where A and B and C are doing something you wouldn't probably create three indexes on a table if it had three bad queries running like that. You would most probably create an index on just A, B, and C. And therefore, A would be pick up, the query on A would pick up the benefit, the query on B would also pick up the benefit, and obviously the query on A, B, and C would pick up the benefit as well. You actually have to do not just, there's my predicates, slap an index on, or think about an index, it's there's my predicates, let's do some intelligent consolidation to come up with a smaller set of potential indexes. Now here's where best practice comes in. This is what I, I've actually um, done this in a talk recently about some of the ways of creating indexes without actually creating indexes. Because to create an index is an enormously resource intensive task. And given that we're not entirely sure yet if those indexes are gonna be good or bad, it seems a, a, a poor thing to do to go burn up, you know, gigabytes or terabytes of temp table space creating indexes that might not be appropriate yet. So a common technique or best practice is to create those indexes in either unusable mode or in no segment mode. What in effect we're doing is creating an index definition in the data dictionary only without actually going and physically instantiating that index. We're not actually creating the segment space and the segment to, under, to underpin that index. It's just a metadata definition. Obviously, it can't actually be used to speed up queries yet because it isn't actually a real index. But there are tools inside Oracle to say, if we have the metadata definition for an index, I can run an execution plan on the assumption that index actually exists. So obviously, we can't use it for a genuine execution, but we can actually get an execution plan, an explain plan, based on these indexes that exist only as metadata. And the advantage of that is, is what we're really doing is saying, here's my potential SQLs that are problematic. We are now doing a validation step saying, if these indexes actually came into existence, are those SQLs actually going to use them? Because just because an index is there, doesn't mean the optimizer is gonna pick them up. It does a costing and a cardinality decision to decide if the index is worth it. So having those indexes defined just as metadata lets you do this step, which is generate some explain plans for the problematic SQLs to see if those indexes are indeed actually worth building. Now that I'm confident that the ex execution plan is going to 
give me the use of that index, I'm actually going to go ahead and create it. This is the part where I actually am going to burn up a lot of resources, but I have increased confidence that that index is actually going to be beneficial. I'm still going to create it as invisible. Now, the reason I'm going to create it as invisible is if I just create an index normally, immediately it is available to every query in your system to use it. Now, that might make a whole lot of queries better. It might make a whole stack of queries worse. We don't know. We At the moment, we're only focusing on those top, for example, 10 SQLs. So creating an index as, an, as, an, as invisible means nothing can see it yet. It's now physically instantiated as a genuine segment, but it doesn't actually available to the optimizer, which is quite useful. A uh, quick footnote, if you create a unique invisible index, it is visible to sessions because it'll still enforce uniqueness. So we're talking about here about indexes we're creating as non-unique and they're invisible. Now, if I'm doing best practice, I need to go grab each of those problematic SQLs that I found before using my monitoring and now actually run them. It's not good enough just to have the explain plan tell me it's going to use the index. I need to actually run the things to see, did I actually make things better? Because sometimes using an index in particular, for example, for a large range scan might actually make your query slower. So if I've got say 17 SQLs that I've identified as, as potentials, I need to go run each of those 17 SQLs and make sure that each one of them actually ran better. Ideally all 17 will, but that may not always be the case. And that's where we get into step eight here, which is we need to decide on the worth of each of the indexes. What if, for example, creating one index makes three SQLs better that I've found, but actually makes three other SQLs in my list of potentials worse? Well, now I'm, I'm, I'm in a balancing act. Do I actually put the index on or not? Now, if it's really important to me that I actually have those three in SQLs that do benefit from an index, that they must go on, then I have to consider something a little bit more complicated, which is I could do this to ensure no regression. I would have the index on, it's still invisible, remember. I know that a certain subset of my SQLs are actually going to benefit. I will then go need to visit all the SQLs that will actually regress by adding that index and in some way manipulate them, for example, add a no index hint to make sure they don't pick up that index when we actually make it visible. In that way, I'm sort of getting the best of both worlds. The, index, the SQLs that will benefit, they will benefit when I make this index visible. And then the SQLs that are gonna regress, when I do make the index visible, they're gonna have a hint which actually forces them not to use it. So they'll have the same behavior characteristics. Finally, after all that, we have that degree of confidence. We've eliminated the vast majority of risk associated with creating an index. So we make that index visible and then we're done. It's that simple. There is actually a 10 step process if you're going to follow best practice to actually create an index on a system. After that, after all that work, normally what happens then is you'll probably just go grab a coffee and relax, maybe take a little break. And then you do then, then you start again. Because literally every time your system is running, more queries come in, new queries come in all the time. You'd then now need to go. Go back to step one and get, for example, the next 15 minute AWR report or the next hour's AWR report. However long it took you to do those 10 steps, you're now back to square one and off you go again. That's best practice for creating an index. I'd be willing to wager, and I'll quite happily confess myself, that none of us do this. You know, that's what we should be doing because it eliminates risk and yet yields benefits, but we don't. We just, generally what happens is we throw the index on and we see what happens. And then if it all goes very, very pear-shaped, which is your localism for it goes bad, then we might drop that index off, for example, and start and scratch our heads. This leads me on to the 19C offering that's coming out sometime this year. And that is, what if we could do that 10-step process automatically with no intervention? And that is the premise of 19C automatic indexes. We're looking at a system where the database itself will follow that 10 step process. Not just, oh, it'll see an SQL, see that it's bad, find some columns, slap an index on. It will follow that best practice of identify SQLs, identify columns for indexing, consolidate the list, do some metadata testing first, do some genuine response time testing first with the index as invisible, make sure there's gonna be no regressions for other SQLs, make sure only the SQLs that will benefit will actually be able, be able to use that index and away we go. So we follow that best practice. And 
I've got a little diagram here, which I stole from uh, the Optimizer Product Manager slide. So we identify the candidates, create them invisible, compile, rebuild the index unusable, mark them visible, and validation continues for the workload. And then we repeat it every 15 minutes. That is one of the things that's going to be coming in Oracle 19C. Most probably, and please don't quote me this, this is my understanding, most probably initially and maybe even solely on our cloud offerings. Once again, this is something that we want to be able to manage in terms of how much background work this process will do, how much effort will go in. We need to be very careful in terms of we don't harm people's resource management. We don't want to have a tool that does a fantastic job creating indexes, but sucks the life out of your server while it's doing it. Certainly initially, I'd imagine we'll only be rolling this out on our own cloud where we can very carefully manage and watch and control the resources. But maybe at some stage in future with 19, it will actually be available across all versions of 19. But either way, I think the 19C stuff is way cool. The only thing you'll need to set for that is some preferences. So these are the kind of preferences. Do you want to exclude some schemas from the automatic job? Do you want to, um, for example, do just some reporting? That's the index mode. I put two in red, and this is why I wanted to touch on these um, preferences. There'll be auto index retention for auto. What does that mean? That means the automatic monitor will obviously come up with a list of indexes to add from time to time. These are what we call automatically added indexes. What will happen, of course, is over time, we'll add more and more indexes. But also, if those automatically created indexes are not used for a period of time, for example, say a month or two months, et cetera, then we will drop them. So we're not just like saying, here's five more indexes, and then next week, here's 15 more indexes, and you get this enormous soup of indexes. What we're doing is we'll actually add indexes, and then as they drop off usage, for example, your applications may change, or just the queries that were monitored may only run very infrequently, then we'll actually drop those indexes. So we're actually trying to self-manage here as well. The second preference is a bit more interesting for us as DBAs on the call, which is auto index retention for manual. And if you're suspicioning what that is, is that yes, we will at the moment, we can go drop indexes that you have created. Yes, that is also a feature of the new automatic indexes. Not will it only monitor its own automatic indexes, it'll monitor yours as well. Out of the box, we set that to I think over a year. We're gonna be very, very generous in terms of leaving manually created indexes on. But just to let you know that this is our long-term goal, the fact that the database should be able to come up with an adequate indexing strategy, no matter whether the indexes it's created or indexes that you've created. I'd imagine we'll have some, you know, some care and attention pushed on this. And one of the things you can do when this thing comes out is run it just in a reporting mode, as opposed to actually doing it. But so far, most of the tests we've done on some benchmarks seem to suggest that the automatic indexing is doing a better job than manually created regimes. Now, I know that's just a wave of my hand and you might be skeptical and that's fine. I'm a big fan of skepticism because the more holes and things you can poke in these things, the more robust we can make it. One of the things I like about this is in terms of development for your developers now, they can, with a lot more confidence, build applications which is, give me just the primary key indexes, give me maybe the foreign key indexes, roll my application out. As opposed to then spending a lot of time thinking of other indexes that might be needed for performance. They can roll out with the core set of indexes that help define the data integrity of the database. And let's face it, that's a good thing if we can even get there. And then we can actually look at the database itself coming up with appropriate indexing strategies based on real-time production use. I, 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 I,